version control. You have to use version control, no excuse. Depending on what you are working on, there are different tools for the job. If you are working with code, one tool really stands out. It's Git. Most modern software workflows and companies are based on Git. We will set up Git on your system and we will connect to the popular GitHub service and push our changes. Hi, my name is Zen and welcome to my channel. So today we will look at different um, software version control tools. So there are many tools currently to do the job and uh, because the landscape is fairly fast moving and most companies are not, there are still some tools in use widespread over the industry which are not really uh, up to date, let's say. So for instance, one of the tools that I'm talking about is SVN. Most of the tools or of the companies today might even still have something like SVM or also Mercurial. Um, whatever you're using, it's still better than not doing version control at all. Because I have also seen companies where basically they do version control with shipping folders and stuff like that. It still happens even today. Don't do this. If you're looking into the gaming industry, then you might come across Perforce. This is especially popular where you need to handle larger files like complete binaries or libraries um, or other assets like 3D models or graphics or uh, textures or mappings. So this is really, really popular in uh, gaming industry. If you're working a lot with Unreal engines, for instance, um, it might be the right tool for you. If you're working with plain code, though, nothing comes close to Git. Git is, in my opinion, and probably also in the opinion of most of the soft workers in the industry, uh, the leading tool when it comes to version control. It's free and it's incredibly powerful. Um, it is though not the tool that the biggest of the industry are using. So if you look at Facebook, if you look at Google, most of them have their homegrown version control systems. For instance, Google is using Piper or um, uh, Microsoft is using something that is based on uh, Scalar. Uh, most of them are somehow based on Git and related to Git. So if you want to check them out, I think Scalar uh, up today is not even released on a Scalar anymore. Um, it's part of Microsoft Git. Um, but uh, anyways, it's an extension to Git, which is um, offering everything that you need if you're working on many files on big systems. Um, but uh, because Git is the root of it all, we will today have a look at Git. So the first thing that we need to do is install this on our system. So we will go to, to our console and install Git. So because we run Linux, it's fairly straightforward. So sudo apt, we want to install Git. So it will just gather the packages for us and then it will uh, probably ask whether you need to install some additional packages depending on what you have already installed. But basically that's it. You have now Git set up on your system. Now in order to connect to um, the cloud, for instance, to GitHub or something similar, um, you want to create an encryption key. Uh, the encryption key is something that is important for you to establish a secure connection with whatever uh, version control system you're using. Um, Git is currently mostly using SSH keys. Um, it is, has just a big benefit that you do not need to enter your password every time you want to uh, do a code change or something similar. Um, in order to generate the key, we need to use the built-in SSH keygen, which we can just call by SSH keygen. And then we choose the encryption method. So Many of you might uh, might know this encryption method, like the uh, 4096 um, encryption of RSA key, but the standards have shifted, and if you want to be up to date, you should use this standard. Then we choose for which um, email address we want to create the specific key. 
So in this case, I will use my own email address and then I will generate the key in. So it will ask me whether this is okay to store it. So usually the default is okay. So just hit enter. It wants to create a passphrase. Usually if you're the only person using your laptop, you do not want to create the passphrase. So just hit enter twice and then you're done. And the key is created for my email address and also a public fingerprint for that key. So in order to now have the verification and the handshake with, for instance, the service of GitHub, what we need to do is to log into GitHub and upload exactly the public part of my key. So what we need to do is to sign in to GitHub using my credentials and yeah, it asks me whether I want to save. Probably I want to save. Um, so I'm just doing this because I'm on this virtual machine. You should never save passwords, by the way. Um, and now I'm logged in and under my settings of my account, I can now add additional keys. So in this case, it's an SSH key. So I go to SSH keys. And here there's also guidance about generating and common problems. But whatever, we already have a key and now we put new SSH key. So we need to go to the console again and find out our key. Because I also want to teach a little bit about console usage, we will use another tool for that, just because console is amazing. So we are going to sudo apt install xclip because xclip is a very useful console tool where you can copy the content of files into your buffer or into your clipboard, uh, whatever you want to do about it. And then we're going to access our file that we have just created, which is under SSH and then this ID ED25519. And here use the public key, never ever access your private key. Nobody should know about that. And here we're going to use xclip, the tool that we have just downloaded and also specify that we want to use it in our clipboard. So we're going to use this command and then go back to the website and just paste our SSH key. The title, yeah, we're just going to say, I don't know, Zen. Let's add this key. And now we have a new SSH key, which is able to read and write to my repositories that I have created here. So we're going to go now to the repositories of mine because I already have a good repository created here, which we're going to access. So we go to this repository and we want to clone this one. So here under clone, you have uh, different options. You can either use HTTPS, which will ask you for your credentials, like the login and your um, password, or we use the SSH option because SSH, we already have now uh, done the handshake for SSH. So GitHub knows about my computer uh, because GitHub has my key and I have my private key. So GitHub knows that I am the right person who is accessing the repository via SSH. So we can just use SSH. Now we go to our console again and just clone this repository. We will use git clone for that and we'll here insert link and clone it. If it's the first time that we are accessing GitHub, it will ask us about uh, whether this is a safe connection. So for GitHub, we just assume that it's a safe connection and we want to add it to our known hosts. So we have created or cloned this repository and we now see it under, uh, under our files, it is here. So the next thing that we need to do is to copy our files that we have created inside our repository. So I think last time we put them on the documents, but just have a look. I think they are here. Yes, they are here. Um, just have a look at the structure, so that's fine. Um, these are basically the first three files that we have created. So we will move them. Um, yeah, we just 
move star to uh, inside the repository that we have just cloned. We have now moved off those files and we'll also go there. Um, Uh, which is quite cool. So if you want to access this last part of the command, you can just press the alternative key and the dot key. It will just enter the last part of the command that you have used. So we now go are inside this repository and we see here it's one, two, three, the files that we have copied inside and this readme, which was already part of the repository. So what we now can do using Git is have an overlook of all the files that we have changed. So in this case, we're going to use git status for that. So git status is telling me what exactly has been changed. So in this case, it's telling me that there are folders that have been changed on the one, two and three and um, whether I want to do something about it. So we can just, for instance, go into this folder and have a look. And here we have some of the things inside. There is a little bit more convenient way to do this, which is using obviously also GUI tools, which are based on Git. Um, so the classical one would be the Git GUI, which we can also install, I think, using up. So I have no idea how this one is written, but maybe Git we is the correct one looks like it was the correct one so i think this one is the official one of git it's still fairly old school and look and feel but does the job pretty pretty well so here if we open now um, the git GUI, um, we see that we do have all of the stuff that is in unstaged so what we need to do is we need to add those files to the staged area. We could also all do all of this using the command line, but with the GUI, it's just a little bit more convenient. And then we need to add a commit message. The commit message is usually something um, where you describe what you have changed or why you have changed something in order to trace back your changes. So in this case, uh, we say added, uh, we add files um, base on previous videos. For me, that's totally fine as an explanation. Uh, one thing though, you should always write in present tense. It's ma making rollbacks much less awkward because if you uh, roll back something that's called add files, it does make sense. If you roll back something which is called added files, it gets weird pretty quickly. So just use present tense, it's best practice, even though most people are not doing it. So at this point, we are able to commit all the changes. And it says me, I'm not sure who you are. But the good thing is it also tells me directly what I need to do. So I need to run exactly this command. So let's go. Uh, we will just do this now running in the console. Um, so for that, I think we need to close git GUI. Um, we can also open it uh, with this uh, ampersand with the ampersand uh, the good thing is that it gets detached from console so i can use the console for other stuff um, and if i now press commit again it tells me this so we're just um, going to use this error message and actually do something about it which is telling git config we need to add our email address in my case, is then and we need to add our username. So that's fine. Should be fine, and now we should be able to commit. So we have committed the changes and we still need to get them on server. We will using this by using the git push command, 
which is pushing my changes to server. So we have updated now the main branch to the new main branch by updating the commit to that. And on the GitHub, we can also um, see this. So if we now go here on code and update this, we immediately see that there are now three new folders added and I can have a look at these folders at what is inside. In this case, I just have added everything. I probably should not have added the program itself because this is a compiled file. I will probably remove them later on, but not now. Um, but yeah, that's it. We have connected to um, GitHub and we have used Git to track the changes of our files. That's all uh, for today. So turn on your machine and get started. Um, as always, tell me what you want to hear about next and obviously enjoy coding.